mistrust in Google is at an all-time high. And we can see this in the recent article over on Search Engine Land, where a bunch of PPC pros were giving their input onto the things Google have done recently to build this level of mistrust. Things are crazy right now. But apart from that, we can also see the recent cases Google has been in regarding their antitrust lawsuits. It's obviously come out that Google do increase the CPCs across the board when they want to make more money. So again, this builds massive levels of distrust. So really, when you think about it, you're running ads on Google, but you're also needing to do one very crucial task, and that is to protect your budget from Google. So what do I mean by that? Well, it's quite simple, really. Google wants to spend all of your money as quickly as it possibly can. It will find every avenue and every way to do so, unless you put some restraints in place. Now, there are a bunch of obvious restraints you can put in place. You set your budget, you set your CPA target, but quite often what can happen is, even with budgets and CPA targets that you're comfortable with when they're set, Google can still go absolutely crazy. I'm sure you guys have seen plenty of examples of campaign overspend or campaigns where the CPC can increase crazy amounts. I've seen campaigns where the CPC can get as high as 300% more than what the average is on a given day, just randomly, out the blue, and I don't get any conversions to show for it. All I have is additional spend and less traffic as a result of that additional spend. So what I'm going to share with you are the three Three key ways you can protect your budget on Google Ads to make sure that Google is using it as efficiently as possible because without doing these steps where they're needed, you can find yourself spending more than you should do on your campaign. The first one we're going to start with is the obvious place to start, which is your budget. Now, when you're budgeting a campaign, you need to obviously make sure you have enough budget to cover the level of clicks you need to achieve to get a conversion. If the average CPC in your industry is £2 and your website converts at 5%, you know how many clicks it will take before you get a conversion and how much that conversion is going to cost you. So you budget your campaign appropriately in line with that kind of scenario and of course with the available search volume in the market. Now most of you have been running campaigns for a while now so you know what your budget can actually do and what it's capable of and what you want to do is try and scale your campaign. Now when you scale a campaign one of the obvious ways to start is of course increasing your budget but before you do that think about this. When you increase your budget, your conversions don't increase in direct proportion. If you increase your budget 30%, you're not going to get 30% more conversions. And why? Because for Google to allow you to reach a bigger pool of people in your target market, Google charges you more money to do so. You end up paying more money for your traffic to get to those additional users with the budget up uplift you provide. In a lot of cases, this is a fair exchange because of course, if you pay more for your traffic and you still get an uplifting conversion volume while maintaining a CPA that is acceptable to you, then that's good. You've increased the number of volume of leads you're getting and you've maintained a CPA that is favorable. But here's the danger, over budgeting a campaign significantly. What can happen is, say you scale a campaign, you've increased the budget to where you want it to get to and you wanna to get to the next level. So you increase your budget again. What can happen very quickly is that Google basically sends you the same amount of traffic you usually get, but all that happens is you pay a premium for that traffic. Your CPCs can increase exponentially if your campaign is massively over budget. So say for example, you're running a campaign and the average budget you spend per day is £100. You want to increase to £200, maybe you do that, and then it starts to spend in line with £200 and you maybe get 50% more traffic, still favorable. But say you go even a level above that and you go to 300 pounds per day. What might happen at that stage in this particular scenario is that you don't get any more traffic and all that happens is your CPCs massively increase. And as a result of your CPCs massively increasing, you do spend that full 300 pounds, but you don't have any additional leads to show for it. But you might say to yourself, hold on a second, I set myself a CPA target. This shouldn't happen. Why is Google spending my money when I've set a CPA target in line with where I need things to be? If my campaign is over budget, technically speaking, it shouldn't be able to spend that money and it should basically hold the line and not overspend. Well, that's what's supposed to happen, but actually what really happens a lot of the time is Google will just spend your budget anyway, because it can and you can't stop them. When a campaign is over budget, there isn't much you can do about it apart from lowering your budget back to levels that allow you to have a better cost per conversion and a better CPC. So be careful when increasing your budget. It won't increase in direct proportion. And if you go too high, you'll end up just giving Google more money for the same amount of traffic to reach the same number of people for no reason. Google aren't gonna stop themselves from doing this. They're gonna just spend your money 
as a result of that change, so be very careful when increasing your budgets. Something else Google is very guilty of when it comes to wasteful spending is, of course, spending more on clicks than it should do. There are situations I've seen where I've seen on the odd day in a campaign that might be quite squeezed, might be quite low volume, where Google is struggling to spend the budget randomly on given days, CPCs can increase 300, 400, 500 times more than the running average on a campaign. Randomly, a campaign where a CPC is generally between five and six pounds can get CPCs at 28 and 30 pounds, which is insane. So when this happens, what's going on with Google? Well, it's quite simple. It goes back to the similar scenario I explained with over budgeting. If your campaign is struggling to spend budget, not necessarily just because it's over budget, maybe you're in a very limited industry where search volume has dropped off. Maybe things like school holidays or vacations can effect and seasonality can affect your, your campaigns. When you start to see a decline in volume, Google will still try and make up for that decline with spending more money. It will try and hit the same run rate of ad spend regardless. Google says they take into consideration seasonality and other factors when it comes to adjusting your bids, but in reality, if the money's on the table and Google can spend it, they probably will. So what can you do? Well, it's quite simple. Sometimes the remedy is a portfolio bidding strategy, which allows you to simultaneously take advantage of Google's smart bidding technology, but also setting a max CPC limit. I've covered this on a previous video. I've linked it down below in the description, so check that video out. I won't go into crazy amounts of detail about this type of bidding, but it's the best of both worlds. But there is one provision I will say you have to be really careful of. When you set your max CPC bid limit for a portfolio bidding strategy, give it some breathing room. If your max CPC is going to be set too close to where you're achieving, the campaign will tighten up too much, you won't be able to spend your budget because you'll be limited by your bid cap. Remember, your average CPC is just that, it is an average, meaning some clicks are going to be much more expensive, other clicks are going to be cheaper. So you want to give your portfolio strategy a CPC that allows it to move around up and down that scale. If you've got a CPC in your campaign of £2, don't set your portfolio bid strategy max CPC at £2, set it a bit higher. Basically, this exercise is about budget conservation and making sure your click costs come in at a reasonable level. So instead of having it set at £2, maybe look at £3 or £4 because when you look at your data and you see on the odd occasion Google has put your CPC to £10 or even £20, that's the behaviour you're trying to limit. You don't want to pay for that much for your traffic. So set the target to protect that crazy insane level of bidding as opposed to something where it's just a bit higher than what your average is used to being. Now you might argue Google must set your CPC sees that high for a reason. Maybe this potential customer was really, really valuable and it means that maybe you wanted to really get that customer and increase your bids. Well, the simple factor is this. If you know that CPC is insanely high and you know your industry and you know your competitors will also not want to pay that much for traffic, which is generally the case. Therefore, because everybody's using smart bidding, if a very high value potential customer comes along and everyone raises their bids simultaneously, it can get crazy. And Google knows this. And what they don't know is how much you are actually willing to pay for that click. All they know is your campaign objective of a target CPA or a target return on advertising spend or whatever your objective may be. They don't care about what your maximum limit of bid is when using smart bidding, which is why a portfolio strategy becomes really, really important. And finally, the last thing you need to do to conserve your budget from Google going crazy is to preempt negative keywords. Guess what you need to add before it actually happens. So what do I mean by that? Well, it's quite simple. Sometimes Google will just go off piste. They will just start spending your money on some very weird search terms that you've never seen before. You're consistently running a campaign, you're consistently adding negatives, things are looking good, then randomly one week you just see some insane search terms come in. Now, this could be as a result of potentially new changes in the market, maybe new companies, maybe new initiatives, could be things outside of Google's control, but sometimes it's pretty much just Google. They just decide that, you know, your phrase match keyword should match to a random scenario or a random thing that's nothing to do with your business. And you have to basically preempt that in the long term. Remember, just because you've added negative keywords consistently from the start of your campaign, it doesn't promise that tomorrow your search term traffic quality will remain good. Sometimes Google just goes a bit nuts. 
So to preempt this craziness, what you need to do is first of all, identify the original source of the negative keywords you've added. So let's use an example of a flooring business. Say for example, I am a flooring and carpet business and I only do a certain type of flooring, but randomly in my search terms report, I'm seeing different types of flooring appear that I do not do. Instead of just adding those negative keywords from the types of flooring you do not do, and just add it from those search terms that you've seen, preempt it. Go in the market, take a second out and do some research around all of the flooring people are looking for online. Create a mega list of all of the flooring you do not do. This may be particular styles, maybe particular colors, maybe particular patterns, maybe particular brands. It could be a number of things. Now, a lot of people might say this may limit the campaign in the long term because on the odd occasion, one of these kind of long tail terms slightly outside the remit of what you do could convert because of the nature of smart bidding and traffic versus the kind of search somebody's making or the person doing the search. But it doesn't make sense to me. I think it makes sense to bid on the keywords that are within your remit, that are serviceable, and then by preempting the long tail list of things you do not explicitly do, things you cannot service or cannot deal with, doing that research long term is going to put you in a very good position. So that is a massive way to protect your budget in the long term because if Google decided to start matching your campaigns to certain keywords that are not related to what you do, You've already blocked them, you've preempted it and you've stopped it from happening in the long term. So let me bring your focus back towards the whole point I made this video, which is of course the mistrust in Google and the long term future of Google Ads as either advertisers running a business who are bidding on keywords to promote your business or as agencies or freelancers. Long term, people are thinking, this is terrible. Google is going to start doing worse things. The industry is going to go into disarray. Maybe I won't have a job or a career in the long term. Maybe this won't work for my business in the long term. Well, I'm here to tell you, I think Google Ads will always work for your business because the nature of what it is, it's where people are looking for your services and products right now. Yes, there are many, many more challenges. And for the people out there who are managing Google Ads on behalf of businesses like myself, you may be worried that because of AI and the lack of controls you're getting in the long term, you might be out of a job. But actually, it's very much the opposite. Businesses need your help and my help hit me up in the comments below to go to my website and book help from me for, to look at your campaigns. Now, the thing is, businesses need help. They need a lot more help than they used to. Google Ads used to be very simple. It was a case of, I set my bid, I set my max CPC, and that's what I'll pay for a click, and I'll move my bids around until things are comfortable. With all of the AI and smart bidding and the lack of controls and the lack of transparency, it takes a lot of experience to get good results in even the most simple campaign types. So, that's my message to you. I wouldn't worry too much. Google Ads is going to be here for a very long time and it will continue to deliver results and you will always be able to get results from Google Ads. All it takes is a bit more patience. Thank you guys for watching this video or should I say rant? If you liked it, let me know in the comments below or like this video. Let me know in the comments actually whether or not you think Google Ads has become ridiculously untrustworthy and whether or not you're considering abandoning it altogether as a marketing method. I reply to all comments on all of my new videos. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out the other content on my channel and head over to darren-taylor.com for help with your PPC campaigns and I'll see you guys on my next video.